Welcome back everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a Miller Dynasty 350 for shielded metal arc welding. So just by looking at the front, uh, you'll be able to tell that there's no power switch and that's because the power switch is actually in the back. So let's go ahead and walk around to the back and I'll show you where that is. And you can see here this toggle switch that's in the upper left hand corner of the machine. That is the power switch. All you have to do is flip that on and your machine will turn on. Okay, so just a little zoom out just to show you that the machine is on. Now let's get a little bit closer and we can start looking at the settings. But before that, let me go ahead and remove this remote cable. That way we just have a full view of the faceplate. So you're going to notice that some settings have lights on next to them. Uh, let's just take it from the very left and we'll work our way over. So starting at the left, we have polarity. With this machine, there are only two polarities to select from. DC, or direct current, and AC, alternating current. And you cycle between the two just by pushing the button and you'll see the light switches from one to the other. We're going to want to make sure to be on direct current. Next up is process. So we have three options here. First one on top is TIG high frequency impulse, then TIG lift arc, and then stick. So we wanna be on stick. The first two are for a completely different weld process. And then we have output. So right now we have remote standard, and then there's remote two times hold, and then there's on. So the first two dealing with remotes, that's for a different welding process. We wanna make sure that our output is constantly on, so go ahead and push that button and you'll notice a blue light uh, comes on. And now these other ones like pulsar, sequencer, gas dig, and AC wavelength, those are for something else. So we're just not going to worry about any of that right now. We're just going to focus on the first three. So just a quick recap, polarity, DC, process, stick, and output, on. And once you've verified that all three of those first uh, options are selected correctly, you can go ahead and adjust your amperage using the dial in the upper right hand corner. And you'll notice that we have two different numbers up here. One is voltage, so we're not going to be able to change this. Right now it's displaying open circuit voltage, and while we're welding, it's going to show us our actual welding voltage. The only thing that we can actually change is the amperage. Now let's take a quick step back and let's take a look at the cables. So what I'm going to do is disconnect these really fast so that way I can show you some of the symbols and then we'll continue from there. And let's get a little bit closer so that way you can see these symbols a little bit better. So starting with the top one, this is going to be for our remote cable. The second one down is for your electrode cable. The third one down is going to be for shielding gas. And then the fourth symbol is going to be for your ground clamp cable. Now if you're ever unsure about what's connected to the electrode terminal, go ahead and find your electrode holder and then just trace the lead all the way back to you know the plug and then just make sure that the right plug is in your machine. If something else is in there, go ahead and uh, remove it and then plug in your electrode holder. And the same thing goes for the ground clamp. You'll just find the ground clamp, trace it all the way back to the end of the lead and then make sure that it's plugged in. So just a quick recap, the remote and the shielding gas lines are for a different welding process, and then the other two lines down below are for something else. And that's pretty much it. That's how you set up your Dynasty 350 for shielded metal arc welding.